Hi everybody, back to bet. We're now into the afternoon, lots of stuff going on. Really excited to have Pete here. Pete is for, um, your title is? It's technology lead. You're a technology lead yes. at a multi-academy trust. That's right. And you're gonna share with us and the audience today a little bit of stuff on making a tech work. So really excited to listen to this. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Pete. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, thanks very much. So a little bit of an introduction, first of all, then. I am Pete Godwin. I'm the um, uh, technology lead at Elston Hall Learning Trust. I've been a primary teacher for the past 17 years, and I've been a, a specialist ICT teacher and EdTech lead for most of that time. So our trust then, we've got five schools in the trust, four in Wolverhampton and one in Warsaw in the West Midlands. And um, the real core value of the trust is to ensure that all of our children make the very best progress that they can and achieve the best that they possibly can. And of course, we're really passionate about making sure that our children are uh, equipped with those 21st century skills, ready for that world that they'll be entering after they leave our settings. I'm going to talk to you this afternoon about one particular school, which is um, Feasy Park Farm Primary School, which is where I started my um, EdTech journey for this trust um, before the school actually joined the trust. So Feasy is in Great Bar, uh, which is in the West Midlands. It's a large three-form entry primary school with an earlier centre attached. We've got um, just under 700 pupils and our children uh, from a range of different backgrounds and aged from um, a few weeks old right through to 11 years old. So Feezy joined the Trust in February to, uh, 2020. We were uh, shortlisted for uh, the Bet Impact Award uh, the, the same year and we are a finalist for uh, a collaboration award this year too. So fingers crossed for the award ceremony this evening. So Feezy uh, when I joined the school, which was about eight years ago, um, was uh, 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 described by um, Ofsted as uh, uh, teaching was described as dusty, um, the learning was passive, and there was very little tech uh, in the school. So I'm going to share the, the journey of that school with you today. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we made EdTech work for us. Um, and also, so kind of spin that around a little bit, as well as EdTech working for us, talk a little bit about how EdTech made the school work. So um, without the tech, uh, the school was sort of ticking over, but when we introduced it, we, we, we noticed uh, a difference straight away. And then I'm going to talk about uh, what we do next. So as I mentioned, the beginning of our journey eight years ago, there was very little tech in the school. What tech was there wasn't being used effectively. Um, purchasing decisions were being made by uh, a business manager and, and technical support staff and there was no real um, CPD to back up that, um, those purchases. As I said, Ofsted described teaching as dusty um, and, and learning was passive. You can see here uh, on the screen behind me a, a, a typical classroom setup. Some interactive boards were in the school but because that CPD wasn't in place they weren't being used effectively. Um, and in a typical classroom, you can see there the, the dry whiteboard was wheeled out in front of it uh, for the teacher to write on. And it was very much the teacher doing all of the talking, delivering that lesson to the children. The children weren't really involved. They were just passive learners. So the journey began really when um, there was a change of leadership at the school. The, the head teacher at the time uh, myself and a few other members of staff who came from a school where we'd successfully implemented EdTech uh, and, and we've been using it for many years and we saw the benefits of it. So we thought EdTech would be the perfect catalyst for the, the necessary improvements at that school. We knew that we needed the children to be more involved in their learning. We needed them to be talking to one another. So an obvious choice for us were interactive flat panels. So we installed those into our classrooms. We wanted to encourage collaboration. We wanted to encourage uh, talking within lessons so that those children could really take ownership of their learning. 
We also bought some children's devices. We looked at laptops and we, we purposely chose to have shared devices rather than one-to-one -one at that stage because we needed our children to be working together. We needed them to talk to one another and uh, that was the way that we did it. We've got a setup where we've got um, staff who trial things in their classrooms. So if we're introducing new tech, the way we make it work is by introducing it in those classrooms, first of all. And those are people who've uh, nominated themselves as our digital champions. They're people who like using tech. We know they'll use it effectively. And we've strategically placed those people um, across the school. So we've got representatives in each uh, key stage and now in each year group who are our digital champions. And staff know that they can go to any one of those digital champions for support. Sometimes they're reluctant to come to an EdTech lead and ask a question because they think it's a silly question, um, but they'll go and ask their, their colleagues. We've got peer-to-peer -peer support set up as well. Those digital champions support one another in their year groups, um, and that's been really effective. Anything that we trial in those classrooms and is successful, we then roll out across the school, and we do that in a gradual process. We'll start with the digital champions in their classrooms. If it's successful there, we'll roll it out to the year group. If it's successful with the year group, we'll then roll it out whole school. And that's been a really, really good model, and that's worked really well for us. So uh, these are some key ingredients that I've highlighted here for how to make the implementation of EdTech successful in a school. I think key is strong leadership. And we had exactly that. We'd got a leader who knew that the tech would work, knew what they wanted to do. They had a strong vision and they shared that vision. And you need the backing of the senior leadership. If it's just one member of staff in one classroom, that can't have an impact. And it can't have the impact on the wider school that we need. So you've got to have the backing of the senior leadership team. And that's exactly what we had. <laughs> With our model of um, trialing things in classrooms, we were able then to prove that things were working. We did some mini um, projects. We, we did some uh, research based on that. And then we were able to share that with the senior leadership team. We were able to share that with governors. Um, so it made it much easier to go back and ask for more money if we wanted to purchase more hardware. So being able to back it up with evidence um, really helped. Next key ingredient then, vision. Uh, really important to have that vision, to know where you want to be. Uh, and, and to understand how you're going to get there. And that's not just one person's vision. It's got to be a vision that's shared um, right across the school with all stakeholders. So leadership team, governors, teaching staff, uh, middle leaders. And uh, the vision really needs to be shared with parents as well. So we shared that vision with, with everybody. So everybody knew where we were heading uh, and how we were going to get there. And everybody was working in the same direction. Infrastructure is key. Uh, there's no point in, uh, for example, introducing devices if your Wi-Fi infrastructure is not going to work. There's nothing worse than um, having devices and not being able to use them. It's very, very easy to um, uh, have a device, Wi-Fi not work, staff don't pick it up again. They, they see it as too much problem, too much trouble. So you've got to make sure you've got that infrastructure back up there, ready to go, so that you know everything's going to work and you can implement things successfully. And I think key to that is um, carefully choosing the partners that you work with so that when you're uh, introducing hardware, you don't want to go to a partner who's going to install the hardware and then you never see them again. Um, choose the right partner. If you get the right partner, they'll back that up with CPD. They'll come in, they'll work with you. Um, they'll introduce you to projects that um, they're, they're doing. They'll um, put you in touch with like-minded schools so that you can um, work with them on mini projects too. And, and that's what we did. We did lots of collaboration with other schools, like-minded schools. We um, worked with partners. We had training. We made sure all our staff knew exactly what they were doing. And I think that's key when you're looking at your infrastructure. So CPD is another key ingredient. And again, that can be from um, the, the partners that you choose your suppliers and also we can do that in-house once we got our digital champions trained up they were trained to a higher level so that they could then train the rest of our staff so that as well as rolling out the hardware use we could also roll out that cpd to go with it 
And like I said earlier, we'd got those people then to rely on. People could uh, approach them, people could ask them questions. Uh, another key ingredient then, sustainability. You've got to make sure that whatever you're putting in is going to last. And uh, the same with staff too. We've made sure that um, staff are always being trained up, uh, ready for succession planning, ready to do the next, um, next role, if you like. So when uh, I took on the role across the trust, we'd got staff already trained up to be the EdTech leads in that school. So we'd got people ready to take on that that new challenge and be able to um, seamlessly carry on with things so that there wasn't a, a break, there wasn't um, any, any point where things started to dip, everything just carried on seamlessly. And I think having that shared vision helps with that. People know where you're aiming for, people are able to um, take on that role and support with it. So where are we now at Feezy? We've got uh, dual interactive flat panels in classrooms. We found that collaboration was key. Once we'd got those children talking around those boards, we didn't want to lose that. So when we came around to replacing our boards, any that still worked, we kept. And we've got two boards in the classroom. Um, that allows for collaboration, groups of children working at the boards. It also enables um, different um, uh, points of reference for the children. So within those lessons, we can put two different things on two boards and the children really then take ownership of their learning and they're, be, they're able to work at their own pace. They're able to refer to whatever they need to um, and, and really take control of that learning. We've got one-to-one -one devices now in some of our year groups. We're at a point now where our children Yes, can work together sharing devices, they're collaborating, they're talking, but really now we're looking for that independence and being able to, um, to, to take control of their own learning. So having the one-to-one -one devices has helped with that. It's also helped us with um, parental engagement. With our one-to-one uh, -one devices, we've got online um, provision for work to be set um, for hybrid and continuous learning opportunities. So our children can start a piece of work on their device in school, take their device home with them on the evening and just carry on with that work seamlessly. So um, parents are able to see that work rather than waiting for the next parents' evening when we get all the books out, they can see that work on a daily basis, they can see the feedback that the, the teacher's giving um, and, and that's just been so powerful. So now the school um, at their last, last offset inspection were described as a good school with a strong drive towards excellence. So it's a good and improving school. And um, it, that's really been put down to uh, that use of tech and, and, and how it's encouraged the collaboration and it's completely transformed teaching and learning in the school. And offset actually quoted in their uh, inspection report that the use of technology was effective um, to, de uh, to develop that collaboration between pupils. So we were really pleased to see that uh, in the report. So what's next? Um, for us, the next level of EdTech leadership, so making sure that those people are trained up to take on those roles, um, not only in FEASY but also the other schools in the Trust, we're making sure we've got um, that level of EdTech leadership. Like I said before, it can't be that one person um, and very, very often uh, tech is left to that one person who's uh, good with devices, um, but it needs to be that shared leadership. It, everybody needs to be working towards that same goal. We're going to continue to innovate and, and hopefully inspire others, uh, which is partly the reason why I'm here uh, this afternoon sharing our story with you, and support other schools with their journey too. We, we found it's been really important and, and schools have, um, have welcomed us uh, supporting them with, with their journey. And everybody is on a, a different journey, but you can see overlaps, you can see uh, things, you think, actually, yeah, we were there, uh, and now we're here, so we can help people make those decisions um, and, and point them in the right direction. And we've been doing that as part of um, being one of the DFE demonstrator schools, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, and most of all, continue on our own journey. Um, I think the, the image that I've put there shows that we're, we are on journey, and it's a continuous journey. There's no end to that journey. We don't reach a point where we say, yes, we've done it, tick. Um, it, it, 
tech is ever evolving and, and we need to keep up with that and we need to make sure that our journey continues uh, as well. So as I mentioned, CPD, not only for our own school, but also other schools. Um, during the summer term, we are continuing as an EdTech demonstrator school for the DfE, and part of that is um, funded places for support, so 15 or 30 hours support, which schools can sign up for until the end of July. Um, and that's part of FEASI training, which is part of the Elston Hall Learning Trust digital learning program. We offer an EdTech leadership program, subject coordinator, um, uh, training as well as computing curriculum uh, support and we offer bronze, silver and gold bespoke support packages uh, for that which my uh, colleagues are going to be talking about in, in just a moment. Um, anybody who does want to sign up for support there's a QR code there which will take you straight to uh, the, the page to sign up for that. So hopefully that's given a, a little bit of an insight of uh, our story and uh, how we implemented EdTech and how we've made it work for us and also how it's made uh, our school work too. So um, uh, I'll be around for a while to, to answer any questions if anybody uh, would like to ask. Thank you.